There are three possibilities for the way in which DNA could replicate. The first is by semi-conservative replication. In this method, the double-stranded DNA separates into two single strands, each of which is used as a template strand to create two new double-stranded DNA molecules. You can see from the diagram that each daughter molecule contains one new strand and one old strand. The conservative replication scheme postulates that the double-stranded DNA molecule reforms after the new molecule is created so that the new molecule is made up of two newly synthesized strands. In the dispersive model, each new double-stranded molecule is made up of parts of the parent double-stranded DNA and parts of the daughter double-stranded DNA. We know that DNA replicates in the way described in the semi-conservative model rather than the conservative or dispersive models. Pause the video for a minute here to watch the addition of nucleotides in the animation. The URL for this is located in a separate document that is posted in the video handouts folder on the portal. There are specific rules that must be followed when DNA replication occurs. The first rule is that pairing occurs between complementary bases. As we discussed in the last lecture, that means that A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. Remember that A and T are always joined by two hydrogen bonds and G and C are always joined by three hydrogen bonds. The second rule is that the direction in which the replication occurs is important. A new DNA strand is always synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Because we know that the strands are anti-parallel, this means that the parent strand is always read 3' prime to 5'. Prime. This diagram illustrates a piece of double-stranded DNA. Let's label the ends of the molecule, remembering that the end with the phosphate group is the 5' prime end, and the end with the OH group is the 3' prime end. On the left strand, the top is the 5' prime end and the bottom is the 3' prime end. On the right strand, the top is the 3' prime end and the bottom is the 5' prime end. If the left strand were to be used up as the template strand in DNA replication, the new strand would form from the bottom up. If the right strand were to be used as the template strand, the new strand would form from the top down. Remember that new DNA is always synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This diagram illustrates the same concept as the diagram on the left, but shows slightly more detail. Notice the extra phosphate group that appears in each strand of the diagram. Don't let this confuse you when labeling the ends as 3' prime and 5', prime, as the extra phosphate group on the bottom of the left strand and the extra one on the top of the right strand actually come from the next nucleotide in the sequence, which isn't shown here. We can label the top of the left strand as the 5' prime end and the bottom as the 3' prime end, and the top of the right strand as the 3' prime end and the bottom as the 5' prime end. In a second, you should pause the video to watch the animation on the replication fork. There is a great deal of detail in this video, but for now, just watch it to get a general overall view of the process that takes place at the replication fork. We will discuss and take notes on the details in the upcoming slides. You can pause the video now to watch the animation. DNA replication occurs continuously on one of the two DNA strands and discontinuously on the other because of the fact that new DNA can only be synthesized in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Remember that this means that the parent strand must be read in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. This is no problem for one of the strands, the leading strand. As the DNA continues to unzip, replication can continue to occur so that the new DNA is formed in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. You can see here that DNA polymerase, or specifically DNA polymerase 3, is the enzyme that is responsible for adding new nucleotides to a growing strand. While it is relatively straightforward for the polymerase to synthesize the leading strand, replication of the lagging strand is a bit more complex 
as it replicates discontinuously. This is the case because in order for the new DNA to be synthesized from 5' prime to 3', prime, the DNA polymerase must essentially jump backwards as the double-stranded DNA continues to unzip. You can see from the diagram that the fragments of DNA that make up the lagging strand are called Okazaki fragments. These fragments need to eventually get joined together to make one continuous strand, and the enzyme ligase accomplishes this task. You may remember from the presentations on restriction enzymes and DNA structure that ligase forms the phosphodiester bonds that join the nucleotides together. We will now zoom out a little bit to look at a bigger view of this process. You can see here that DNA replication will begin at the origin, where the enzyme helicase will unzip the double-stranded DNA. In order for the DNA polymerase 3 to function, it must have nucleotides already in place to add on to. Therefore, an enzyme called primase adds a few RNA nucleotides to both strands of the DNA to act as a primer so that the DNA polymerase 3 has something to add on to. You can see the addition of the RNA primers here. You may ask yourself, now that the primers have been added, will the replication proceed to the right of the bubble or to the left? Actually, replication occurs in both directions. Let's first look at the left side of the bubble. The top strand is the leading strand, as the DNA can replicate continuously from the origin of replication towards the left. The bottom strand is the lagging strand, as the replication is discontinuous. However, looking at the right side of the bubble, we see the opposite. The top strand in this case is the lagging strand, while the bottom strand is the leading strand. You can see that once the helicase has completely unzipped the strands and the DNA of each strand has been replicated, two new double strands of DNA have been produced. Here is another diagram that illustrates that DNA replication is bidirectional. However, this picture is even more zoomed out than the last one. Notice here that each DNA strand has a number of different replication bubbles. Each of these replication bubbles has a replication fork on each side at which DNA replication occurs. The replication continues to occur as helicase unzips the strands in both directions until the bubbles essentially join one another and two daughter strands have been created. What advantage is there to starting the replication at multiple locations simultaneously? Now that we have covered all the basics, Let's do a little bit of review here, being sure to label everything of importance. There will be a few things introduced in this slide that you haven't seen before. Keep in mind that this diagram shows only one side of a replication bubble. The first step is for the enzyme helicase to unwind the double-stranded DNA. Single-stranded binding proteins, or SSBs, then bind to the single-stranded DNA to prevent it from recoiling to form a helix. DNA polymerase 3 then adds nucleotides continuously to the leading strand. Keep in mind that no RNA primer is shown in this diagram, even though one existed at some point on the strand. An RNA primer is added by RNA primase, which is a type of RNA polymerase, to the lagging strand, which is synthesized discontinuously. DNA polymerase 1 functions to replace the RNA primers with DNA as the strand is being synthesized, and then ligase joins the discontinuous Okazaki fragments together. You may have noticed that, although I have talked about DNA polymerase 1 and DNA polymerase 3, I have not mentioned DNA polymerase 2. This enzyme is not shown on any of the diagrams here, but functions in the repair of DNA. This next slide shows a different illustration of a diagram similar to the one on the last slide. However, there are a few additions to point out. Notice here that the enzyme that adds the RNA primer is referred to as DNA primase. I have referred to this enzyme as primase throughout the lecture, 
but sometimes you will see it referred to as RNA primase as well. They're all the same. Topoisomerase is an enzyme that cuts a tightly wound DNA strand to relieve the tension as the helicase unzips the strands. The enzyme then repairs the cut it made once the tension is gone.